Thank you all for joining us for today's webcast. Uh, the title is Everything in Its Place, Taking Inventory of Library Collections. We're broadcasting today from Provo, Utah. I'm Thomas Forsyth. I'm the Client Support Manager for Backstage Library Works. Um, I'll be reading off any questions that you post in chat during our Q&A slides uh, and also during our discussion slides. I'd also like to introduce today's presenter, John Reese. John came to Backstage in 2004 as head of the Mars Authority Control Service. He brought with him a master's degree in library science from Brigham Young University and over 20 years of experience in the world of libraries and library automation services. More than a decade later, John now serves as Backstage's vice president of on-site services. To keep his finger on the pulse of the library world, John covers an occasional weekend shift at the reference desk for the Salt Lake County Library System. He's also an avid genealogical researcher and a mystery novel addict. Uh, we'll be recording today's presentation and that recording along with the slides will be available to you in a few days. We'll email you a link. Attendees lines are muted, so please direct any questions or comments through the chat window. And without further ado, here's John Reese. Well, good morning. Again, my name is John Reese from Backstage Library Works. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, talk to you a little bit about inventory today. And I've noticed that quite a few participants have joined us and we're expecting a few more. This, we're going to do something just a little bit different today in that we're going to try to make this webinar as interactive as possible. So we have a chat box. Anytime we see something that uh, looks like a question, now hopefully we won't miss any of these, but we do have a moderator, Thomas, and so he will uh, go ahead and read that question off, or not necessarily a question if you have something that you, you know feels important and you want to add. Uh, Thomas will try to read it off when we can. Uh, and then we'll go from there. We also are going to poll you several times here to find out why you're, you know, what your interest in um, in inventory is. So we'll, when we do these polls, we'll take a minute to allow you to respond, and we'll, and then we'll proceed from there. Uh, you know, let me just uh, go ahead and move to the next slide here. We'll get started then. Uh, what does inventory mean? That's uh, the first question. Well, we all kind of know what inventory means. Everybody does an inventory. Inventories are done, have been done in uh, you know places of business throughout the ages, and libraries do inventories too. Now, uh, what's the difference? Not a whole lot. What the library's inventory usually consists of is is a shelf read or a physical um, review of the items on their shelves compared to uh, a some kind of a shelf printout of the items that they have in their library automated system, automation system. So there's a lot of things we find out from that, but that's basically what's done when you do an inventory in a library. Now, why are we doing this today? Well, a couple reasons. Last time I did a webinar, we did a uh, webinar on RFID, and we, we had questions of, you know, What's the most important thing for a um, RFID to you? And we are surprised that the, the, you know, we thought the answer was going to be circulation. We want to circulate faster. And it was high, but our poll revealed that a lot of people were really interested in inventory. That was our first cue. Then uh, late last year, Library Journal conducted a survey. And one of the questions on that survey was, What's the most popular initiative libraries plan on starting up in the year 2016? This was really amazing to me in that the answer compared to you know several others was 72% were planning on doing an inventory and or a collection assessment. So uh, with that in mind, we're first of all excited that people have part, are going to participate with us today. We're going to explore that. We're going to tell you a little bit about what we know about inventories. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've researched about inventories. And then hopefully we're going to hear from you. So we're going to start with the first poll. And the uh, first question is, are you planning an inventory in 2016? There's going to be three answers here. Yes, no, and no, but uh, I, I am planning an inventory. And it looks like people are chiming in, and I'm going to give you a few more seconds. 
Okay. Keep it, um, what we're finding is over 50% are actually looking at doing it this year. We're going to go ahead and we're going to ask you another question before we, we start uh, bringing up other slides. And that other slide, uh, or this uh, next question. When was the last time your library performed an inventory? And while you people answer, let me tell you a little story. Several years ago, uh, Backstage was looking at and investigating the uses of RFID and the, uh, the wand that uh, RFID is, uh, vendors are now producing. And it's used primarily for, well, at least the, the sell is that it's used primarily for inventory. So I called up a quite a few customers to find out when they actually had uh, done an inventory. And these customers, actually, a lot of them had the wands, but some of them didn't. And what I found out and what our statistics are proven, are showing here, uh, was that in my case, it was overwhelming that most of them either hadn't done it within the last 10 years or had never done an inventory. It looks like uh, we have a, a fairly uh, substantial percentage that have uh, done an inventory in the last um, five years, which is great. Now the question is, how often do we, does a library need to schedule an inventory, and, and what does that mean uh, for them? Why do they do inventories? Uh, and I'm interested in hearing from you, too. So, you know, you folks that are doing inventories and have done them recently and plan on doing them, you know, let us know what your reasoning is. Um, and so I'll just kind of read off some of these and we'll talk a little bit about them. So why do, why do libraries perform inventories? They want to ensure the accuracy of their catalog record. Um, and, and these are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, they're also interested in uh, estimating their loss rate. It's uh, very important for libraries to know what's, go what's gone missing. Interestingly enough it, enough, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's left the library. It could be on that shelf you know, three or four bays over. Um, sometimes uh, libraries are interested in, in doing more than just a, what they're interested in getting from an inventory is kind of an assessment of the health of their collection. So um, it'll give them a list of items that need to be replaced. Uh, they can assess the condition of their uh, collection if they want at that point. Uh, they can evaluate the quality of their catalog records by comparing what they have in hand against uh, what their catalog record says. Is it correct? Is the title correct? Is the author correct? Is the call number correct? They don't always match. Um, and that sometimes presents a problem, particularly if that call number is way out of order. <clears throat> and so the overall, uh, you know, the, the need to analyze the collection strengths and weaknesses is important. And inventory kind of helps you do that. Uh, and then sometimes uh, libraries, librarians do the inventory because the 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 boss says we need to do it and maybe they don't even know exactly what what the rationale is that they're getting pushed to do this but they do so anyhow uh, john, those are some of the a, go ahead john we've had a few feedback uh comments in chat um priscilla stevenson said uh, they're doing it for prepping for renovation um angela brown says we are in the middle of our inventory uh, they haven't done one for 20 years uh, ben Hope says they need to do it to reconcile their catalog records before moving to a new ILS. Um, yeah. Dan Hottenschlager, I hope I said that correctly, inventory of the collection before moving to a new ILS. Um, Albert Bryson, uh, Lincoln University of PA, uh, they need to know what we have because we're in transition to library automation systems. Uh, we need to know what is missing and do a database cleanup. Um, Ellen Hollis, uh, BNL is looking at moving to RFID. Perfect timing. Yes, we'll actually get to that later. Um, yes. Let's see. Raina Baca preparing for migration to a different ILS as well. Uh, Ange Angelina Brown, we need to stream our, our locations and, and item types. Um, Mary Westbrook, ensure accuracy of catalog and check stack accuracy. Um, Stephen Day is wanting to transfer to an EOS system. And uh, Pamela Hoft, continually doing one to make sure we uh, send most accurate information is located in Discovery Tool. These are all great reasons so, to um, do As it. you can see, th there are a lot of different reasons for wanting to do inventories, but a lot of them tie into wanting catalog accuracy, especially when you're going to be doing some sort of update to that system. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, and a lot of, 
a lot of these were we're going to be doing something in our library different, like uh, <coughs> looking at RFID or moving, and that's another really good reason that uh, people are are considering and doing inventory. Okay, so I'm getting a bit of a cough, so if I stop for a second and have a drink of water, please forgive me. So this is kind of a, uh, going with what to, many of you just answered, but uh, deciding to do an inventory. How do you know? And we'll have you chime in on this too, because this is, we're very interested in, in determining what the cues are for you to do an inventory. Some of them are obvious, you know. Uh, uh, if a, a re, repeated times in your library, a patron is coming up to your desk and saying, I can't find this book. And your uh, reference librarian says, well, let's go find it. And they can't find it either. Then there's a cue there that that book is either completely out of place or that book's walked out of the library. So uh, with a cue like that, you know, there's a few things you can do. One of the things you can do is you take a look. Most automated systems have a record of uh, what the status of a item is is and obviously if you couldn't find that book you'd put it on either traced or lost or missing uh, you can do a survey of that for with most library systems you can get some statistics back to tell you what the percentage of uh, lost traced and missing items are in your library and that can also be a cue you may have a threshold here it says hey you know what if we're if our library has uh, X amount percentage of books lost, maybe five or whatever it is, five percent. It's time to do an inventory, and so you could use that as a cue to do an inventory. Okay, so again, uh, this one we're going to have you chat on what indicators determine that your library needs an inventory. So, a lot of you are looking at it this year in particular. Why we want to know. We're interested in knowing what the cue is that says, hey, you know, we got to do this. And I know you've answered some of this, but uh, how did you know if you're if, that you need to do an inventory? Ben Hope says uh, they can't find things that the catalog says they have on the shelf. Um, Stephanie Day, we have a catalog, but it is very basic with card catalog system and Excel database tracking. Um, you know, we, we've done a few inventories for libraries where they were converting the uh, physical card catalog to an online card catalog system and it required a paired inventory to make sure the materials were actually right. referencing what had been written down long ago. And we'll um, talk a little bit about that too. Go ahead, Thomas. Tammy Keith, a lot of lost and possibly stolen movies. Oh yes, that's actually something we'll go into in more detail later. Um, targeted inventories for high theft areas are, are very common. That's right. Um, or rare of materials of, of rare materials that are important to you is another Good reason to do an inventory. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, Paula Brown, make sure the material is really on the shelf. Robert Gwilt, uh, hasn't been done in forever. Complaints from patron, not on shelf. Yeah. If, if you've had more than a decade from your last inventory, you, it's definitely a good time to try and do it. Um, Justin Hill, preparing for a move to new building and uh, offsite storage is part of the move. Uh, Stephanie Day inventory uh, helps keep track of materials and having a current list available materials for patrons. Uh, Rebecca McCollum, an accuracy on the catalog compared to what's on the shelf and preparing for a migration to a new ILS. Uh, Kathleen Delaney, our special collection records are a mixed bag of local Dewey and LOC call numbers. Rare materials aren't easily identifiable, conservation and preservation needs. And Ellen Hollis, uh, older records were migrated to a new system. Uh, we are finding ghosts in the OPAC. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that too. When you, when sometimes you'll have duplication occurring in records after moving to a new ILS, um, and that can be a good thing for requiring cleanup. Uh, you know, what, Bryson, what, we still have a manual shelf list. We need to make sure everything in our current ILS before transitioning to new ILS. It was strongly recommended by co our cooperative. And Sherry Johnson, I know we have items that have been discarded, but still in the catalog, missing items from the shelf. Yes, we, we've seen that too, where uh, something was selected for um, deaccessioning and it was never properly removed from the catalog. So, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious to me after, uh, you know, reading some of these off that doing an inventory is going to be a, it's, a, it's actually going to be a good thing for your library. It's going to give you a little bit of an idea of what the health of your system is and going to help you to make some decisions uh, going forward with your library. The key is, is in the, in the, you know, we already asked the question, 
the key is to get them done. Get that inventory done. And how often do you do it? Uh, some of the libraries out there, they just don't get to it. It seems to be something that we we regularly in the library world put on the back burner because we have something else. We have another. We have a daytime job. It's called being a librarian, and it's overlooked. And you know, if we can somehow fit it into our schedule to to do the inventory in the library in various ways, in various areas, it's going to be all the better for the health of our system. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the inventories that we've done. The very first inventory we did was uh, kind of an interesting proposition for us. The library was going to move, and this was a library that had a lot of rare material. They were going to move all that material uh, and re-innovate that building. So they were moving it to another town not too far away. And what they didn't want to have happen is they didn't want to stick it in the moving truck and have it not show up. They wanted to make sure that it did show up, and so they're going to inventory it. Um, what we'd found out is from uh, from that process was, or not from that process, but one of the other things that added to that was a lot of the material in that library had never been cataloged and was not on their database. So the first part of our inventory was was to actually put the uh, put the records in the library, the uh, material in the library on the database. We made short bibliographic records for them and barcoded them. Then when we got all of that done, we had an inventory of everything they had. The move took place. And then they had uh, the ability at the other side now to check and make sure everything came in. We've uh, another uh, couple of times we've done some inventories where, and this is particularly um, was important for libraries that have a lot of periodicals coming in, and they have, and there seems to be an inability to get those periodicals. And that's a maybe not an inability, but a decision at one point not to put every periodical, every uh, volume and, and issue on the database. Well. Um, We've had libraries that say, you know, we, we've done that in the past. We now want to go ahead and we want everything on our database and up to date. So the inventory was in the inventory of their periodicals. And in, in, along with that inventory was, again, adding barcodes and holdings records to the database. Now, uh, I think somebody had talked about getting ready for RFID. One of the things about RFID uh, t is you have to tag and touch every every item out there. Uh, if you're looking at any project, and another prime example is if you're doing a reclassification in your library, that is you're moving from Dewey to Library of Congress or something else, uh, you're going you're gonna to be touching every book in the library. And at that point, you should take an inventory. Why not? I mean, you're, you're going to not only because you're touching every book, you're going to get all your books tagged with RFID tags, but you're also going to have an evaluation of what you have out there. You're going to find what items that are missing. Uh, you're going to find items that need to be repaired and what uh, and uh, you know things like that. So when you're doing a project, and keep this in mind, that touches every book, do an inventory. It's not going to cost you that much more time to do the inventory. Maybe a little bit of strategy to get it done. But it's really a good time to do it. And then I think like most of you out here, there is just, we just need an inventory. We have a variety of reasons. We've listed them all. And we need uh, items checked against the database. And that's uh, for sure going to be the most common. Again, it's also, you know, inventories are also that uh, necessary process in the library that are often put aside. Now, we talked a little bit about corresponding services, and I'm going to put a chart up here to, to uh, uh, illustrate that. Okay. Uh, so when you do an inventory, depending on what type of inventory you do, you're going to be doing a variety of other things, or you can be doing a variety of other things. Not necessarily will you be doing it. But uh, adding holdings and barcodes to the books are, are a couple things that can be done. Um, uh, if you're going to be touching the book, you're going to be doing a reclassification or RFID, then you should do an inventory. So I know it's two things at once, but it's going to save you time and a more important money to do them both at once. doesn't make any sense to do a uh, reclassification and then redo do it all over again, touch every book all over again and do an inventory. Do it at the same time. 
sometimes you know uh, you have to do an inventory because they're you got you're going to be either remodeling or you're move, trying to figure out what you need to move to high density storage and um at that point it's a it's a good time to do uh, inventory and a lot of libraries choose to do inventories at that point also so we're going to talk a little bit just briefly about how we do an inventory uh, you wouldn't do it the same well you might do it the same but uh, um, this is just how if you outsource it to an uh, organization this is somewhat this is how we do it so it's probably close to how anybody else would do it this will give you an idea of what the process is in involved here so we we spend some time with the library um, trying to figure out exactly what it is that they want done with an inventory because an inventory is really something you can define and you can add to and subtract from so we we need to make an assessment of what needs to be done and we'll talk to the library and, and we'll talk about what uh, what are you trying to accomplish with this inventory? What is it that you want us to look at? Do you want us to look at the? Do you want us to um, indicate the condition of the book, or do you already know that? Do you want us to look at the volumes that are uh, don't match up on the catalog, um, or do you want us to just find the books that are lost? And uh, and that scope, once that's determined, is going to help. Uh, determine for us it will for sure but it'll help the library know how long it's going to take to do this okay now a couple things to think about <clears throat> when you're talking about time you can if you have a project uh, we, we decided we've worked with you and we looked at what you want done and that inventory of your collection is going to take three or a month okay with 10 people doing it and you you don't have to settle for that. You can say, you know what, John, um, we need it done in two, two and a half weeks. Can you do that? Well, the way you get that flame to, to grow and, is you throw more logs onto the fire. And so what we would do is hire more people to do the inventory. There are risks involved, however. So anytime you want to shorten that and that's that becomes essential to you, please realize that it's not always... Uh, the easiest thing to do. The biggest risk is being able to so you shorten the time. So now you're going to have to hire twice as many people to do your inventory, but they're going to be working for half the amount of time. It's very difficult to hire people to work for two and a half weeks if you're outsourcing it. Now, it may not be difficult for you to um, do that within the library, but you have to have the amount of people to do it. So uh, either way, uh, the risk is being able to bring in the resources to do it if you're shortening the time. And realize also the other thing that affects time is what you want to, the, the scope of your inventory. What do you want done? If you want us uh, simply to look at the, the books, make sure that, uh, you know, and itemize which books are out of order or lost, that's going to go a little bit quicker than if you want us to also indicate what the condition of your uh, each book is in and you want us to pull books for weeding and things like that so that scope is going to help is going to affect the time and what else is going to affect the time is how many people you have to put on it on the job and of course the last thing is cost the first two are part of that the scope you know the more you want done the more it's going to cost the quicker you want it done probably the more it's going to cost you to get it done so just be aware uh, that that's the case and with backstage we will you know we'll we'll give you what the the I don't want to say best case scenario is what what the you know probably the least expensive scenario is first and then you say you know what John we need it done a lot quicker we'll put something together for you to show you what it's going to take to get it done in that time frame okay so um, we've talked a little bit about you know, developing a scope uh, for the project, and you know, we you know what it's going to cost now. We know what it's going to take by way of people and time. What do we What do we do next? Well, actually, we do this this first part, the uh, uh, pre-project site visit. We would we would do to help you develop that uh, scope, time, and cost. And what we would do uh, when we get on that pre-site visit. We would try to we would sample the data for one thing. We, you can get, you can learn a lot about sampling the data. So we do a random sample of your physical collection, 
And from that, we can get some uh, a lot of information that you may, may yourself not have even known. For instance, uh, we went and sampled one library <coughs> that needed some uh, work done. And we found that 20% of the items that were on the shelf were not in their catalog. They said, that can't be. That just no way. I said, OK. But we ended up doing the contract with them. And we did the work. And you know what we found out? 20% of the items were not cataloged. So a sample can tell you a lot. We know it's not completely accurate, but depending on the sample size, it's going to be a little bit more accurate than you know a larger sample, a little bit more accurate than a smaller sample. So the other thing uh, when that pre-site visit is we're going to we're going to work that scope, time, and cost out with you. And then if we get a chance, we have time, we'll we'll map the collection, give us an idea of what's out there, what it looks like, what your stacks look like. We've done, done that now, and you've worked with us, and you've signed a contract, you think we can do it. We're going to send a project manager to get this work done. They're going to lo uh, hire a local team to get it done. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at, we'll send the project manager a couple weeks out of before the project to take place, at least a week, and depending on the scope, maybe two weeks, before the project takes place, <clears throat> to one, hire, to two, uh, we put what we call a project profile together, which goes, again, over everything that you want, and we put it in writing and make sure that you understand it and that we're going to do it. Um, and then at that, the other thing that that guy, that person does when they're out there a week or two in advance is they take a look at the equipment and stage it to get it ready to go. So they're hiring, they're staging equipment, they're working with the library to make sure that what we're going to do is exactly what the library wants. So... We've got that all done, and now we're, uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit about equipment and software. I'm sorry. So what is it that we need to use? Well, we have a software package that's very customizable. And what we uh, do is that we, uh, we extract from your database certain elements that will allow us to do the inventory and put them in shelf list order. And we have ways to divvy it up amongst, uh, you know, a staff of 10 or 20 or whatever. And then... Um, uh, we load that onto the uh, either their PCs or handheld material uh, devices that we're going to do the inventory with, test it, make sure it works, and then um, we begin the process by scanning each item that's on the shelf and comparing it to our software. Again, the software is, is uh, customizable, so if you wanted to add, we want a condition element in it, we could do that, or if you wanted to and we want a we we want to weed this list. We could do that. Uh, you know, we would we would change probably uh, a status to weed in the in the uh, software. So when that came up, instead of uh, doing an inventory on it, we would do the inventory, but we'd pull it at the same time. So yes, we can. That's the software. Can, just, just to oh, interject, John. Um, we can load mm -hmm. into the software the current status of materials, like if they were missing or lost. Um, so that if we locate them while doing an inventory, we can mark them as found and hand them off to library staff. Same with if you want them weeded or any other status loaded ahead of time, uh, the software. That's right. So, I mean, there are limitations to our, all the software out there, but th this one is pretty robust and, again, very customizable. Okay, so you know what? We've, we've staged the equipment. We've hired the staff. We're ready to go. What do we do? Well, we, we begin the process, and uh, this is this is the long part, but it's kind of the easy part because we're all ready to go. What we do, we don't just set our technicians out there and say, go at it. We set up a monitoring system. We monitor each individual out there for production. So, you know, we know, we've, we've figured out how much it's going to take for him, to, him or her to do this. We know how much it's going to take an hour. And we follow these statistics daily to make sure that we, the people we have are actually getting the job done. And what you don't want is, you know, people that are not getting that job done because you're, you're going to go way over schedule and you're going to just make people unhappy. Then the other thing, uh, the other part of that, part two of, uh, of uh, monitoring is quality assurance. So we'll set up, and we'll actually do this with the library to, uh, so they can understand what we're going to do, and, and they have a, agreed that this is a good thing to do. Uh, and they may have some of their own ideas as far as QC. 
but we'll check each individual, the quality of each individual. And for inventory, it's it's pretty much are you are you missing things? Are you not? Are you missing shelves or stacks? And so for each day, our manager will check each individual's the quality of their work to see if they're doing it. And so if either one of them don't match up, if they can't produce or they can't do a, a quality job, then we'll get somebody else. We'll move them move them out. Uh, you know, we love them, but we can't keep them because they can't do the job, and we'll hire somebody else to do it. So we have another section to this, but I wanted to stop and pause for a second and let everybody else uh, chime in. Questions if you have them, comments if you have them. Thomas is going to read them, and we're interested in hearing from you uh, about your inventory and the ideas you have for inventory. Uh, we've had a few comments so far. Uh, Stephanie Day was saying that they currently weed their collections quarterly, as well as order new materials at that time. The hardest part is tracking the checked out books as they use a card catalog system. Um, yeah, Stephanie, I, I can definitely see how that would be a problem. Um, even tracking books that are out at a given time when you're trying to do an inventory with an ILS can be difficult. Um, yeah. Typically, the way yeah. we handle that is uploading uh, to your list exactly what is checked out at a given time. So if you do locate it, you can say, well, maybe this was returned and not updated properly in the catalog. Um, but if, if there's something that you don't find at, after the inventory is complete, you can run those barcodes against your ILS again just to say, well, maybe they were checked out after we began the inventory. Um, but yeah, working with a card catalog system, that definitely does make it more difficult. Yeah. Even the automated is a little bit, as Thomas said, it's a little bit difficult because you got to switch gears, mm -hmm. so to speak, to check uh, the status of books that are checked out. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, Angelina Brown was saying that they scanned over 300,000 items and processed the information last summer over a course of three months uh, with a staff of five to six. And I was chatting with them um, about the fact that they were doing that in chunks. Um, that's something we're going to be discussing on a later slide about how you can handle larger collections when you don't have the staff to do it all at once, but you might be able to parse it out a bit. Well, and, that, and I appreciate that from Angela because it kind of gives you an idea of the time it takes to do this, you know. 300,000 books, that's a lot of books. And they had five or six people doing it. Uh, we'd have probably thrown more at it and got it done quicker, but either way, you know. And when you, the longer you take, the other issues that you have, you, sometimes you just, it makes sense to take a little bit of time to do it, but you do have other issues with it uh, because the books, uh, the library is not closed for three or four months and books are moving, you know. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, someone was also asking if we recommended any particular ILSs for doing inventories. Um, we tend to work with all ILSs, and each one has its own positives and negatives, so we don't have one we'd recommend over another. Um, we have talked to a few clients that have used, uh, apparently WorldCat has put in a new inventory program into their software. So if you've uploaded all of your records into WorldCat, you may be able to use that. Uh, ben Hope says, I'm curious if you have recommendation for post-processing the inventory information uh, gather to determine what is available in back files, new subscriptions, what can be scanned digitally, et cetera. Um, well, we're going to talk a little bit about post-processing. I don't know if we have recommendations for uh, back files and new subscriptions at this point. When we get to that, then, uh, you know, we'll, uh, if we don't explore what to particular um, answers that you're looking for, bring it up again or bring up more specifically what you want. And if we don't have an answer for you, maybe somebody else will out there. Yeah, for moving to digital, um, that's something where the inventory is mostly just verifying what you have. Um, if you're looking to move some of your collection to digital, that's more going to be analyzing what's currently recorded in your catalog um, to see what might be available digitally and what might make more sense if you're doing a weeding process and saying, well, we've got these materials that are in poor condition. Uh, that can be located during an inventory. So you could say, you know, we already need a new copy of this. Maybe now is the time to find a digital copy instead. That's right. Uh, Albert Bryce and I think said, that's one of the uh, We well. don't have much funds, so I'd like to get the inventory software and some equipment we need to do in-house with our own library staff. Um, and yes, again, uh, it, it is possible. Um, to download your information from uh, some of the ILSs into Excel spreadsheets if you want to work that way, um, because it is possible to 
go through your library using an Excel spreadsheet, scan the individual barcodes on individual lines, and then do a sort feature in Excel to match up the barcodes with the barcodes that you've downloaded from your catalog to see what you have and what you don't. Um, but again, if you're uploaded to WorldCat, that might be another option. Um, yeah. We don't, at this point, we have not tried to market our inventory software. We uh, Typically, we're a service company, mm -hmm. and uh, so we develop, the things that we develop in-house are for use on site, in that case, or for use uh, for our technicians to manipulate the, uh, the data mm -hmm. and software, depending on what it is. Um, but that's an interesting thought. Angelina you know, Brown I, I uh, said, I ran the pick and scan logs through Mark Edic and ran a task to look for charged materials and then removed missing statuses from charged items so it was all done in real time. Um, they used Chromebooks, scanners, and Google Docs to share the list. You know, these are all very great suggestions for how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Thomas. I, I think that we're going to... I know that we're going to have this available. Are we going to have part of this chat available? Yes, you know this, is, this entire um, webinar is being recorded, so you will be able to see the chat as it scrolls through. That's great. So for those of you who are trying to take notes and just don't have a, you know, you're just not being able to keep up, you can come back to this when we get this posted on our website and run through it. So if you hear a good idea and you just didn't quite get it down, uh, you know, you'll have a chance to look at it again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Angelina Brown said they scanned everything into text files and then compared the barcodes in Excel afterwards. Yeah, it's not hard to convert a text file over to Excel if you prefer to do it that way. That's right. And there's a lot of creative ways if you're going to do this yourself to, to get this done. Mm -hmm. And we'll, like I said, we'll be discussing that on an upcoming slide. So Ben is typing right now. Once um, I read off what he's typing, uh, we'll probably move on to the next slide. Okay. And by the way, if you we're going to have another we're, when we end the session, we'll have more question, uh, more question comments section is at the very end. So if you didn't get your question in, um, you know, save it for the end. Or if it pertains to what we're talking about, you can go ahead and put it in right then, and Thomas will, will pause me and, and read it off. Uh, ben Hope says, for my question about post processing, I'm trying to determine if there's a system or service that can check ISSNs and ISBNs captured against what is available digitally. Um, I've heard of that at some of the library conventions I've been to, but that's not a service we offer. Um, but yes, I know it is available. Um, if you contact us outside of the webinar, um, we can try and help you track that down. OK, let's move on to the next slide, John. OK, we're, we're going to move on again. If, uh, We'll have another opportunity for you to ask some questions at the very end. So uh, next thing we want to talk about here is what information does the library want to see from an inventory? Well, obviously, what items are lost? I mean, everybody wants to know <laughs> what's out there and that's lost. And, and uh, hopefully, when you do this inventory, you're going to recover some of that because it wasn't really lost. It was just misplaced. Another thing they want to know is how out of order our book collection is. You know, um, an inventory will give you this kind of information, but you got to be aware that, that uh, depending on the algorithm that you have to determine whether a book's out of place or not, these numbers can be very high. Okay, uh, because if a book is just misplaced by one book, you know, I mean, that's probably something you don't want to see. You want to see a book that's three shelves down the road, but I mean, that's one of the things that people are looking for when um, when they want to do an inventory. Another thing uh, that they're interested in or another item or issue that they're interested in is the condition of their book. And you can, I mean, you, you can take an overall look at your, uh, your collection and say, yeah, there's a lot of books that probably need to be weeded or need to be replaced. But in this case, we're touching every book. So we can, uh, you know, we would predetermine with the library what uh, the conditioning elements are, what do they consider poor or needs to be removed, and what do they consider okay? And then we would, as we do an in inventory, we would mark it in that matter, manner, I should say. Oh, that slide didn't go to this. Okay. 
Again, we talked about this as our catalog matchup. So we're doing inventory. We're pulling books off the shelf. We've got it in hand, and we're checking it against the title and the call number and the author. And not always do they match up. As a matter of fact, we can guarantee you that some of these books are going to be uh, mislabeled. Maybe not the book, or it's probably more likely the catalog that's mislabeled. But you're going to find some mismatches, and, and we can report on that. And then, you know, there's a few other things we can report on, but one of the, uh, at the end of the day, what is it that we want from an inventory? And that's really the statistical output. Um, you know, what, what that involves is uh, there's going to be a, a, a statistical output for every book that's been looked at. And that, uh, in some cases, you're going to want all of that, and you're going to have, you're going to assign people to evaluate certain um Portions of that. For instance, if you wanted to find out, uh, if you wanted to, you know, you had a condition element in there, and you wanted to uh, to find out which ones were you you thought should be removed, or your inventory people thought should be removed, then you're going to look at every element in that uh, on that statistical output, or the well, you if it, you know, I mean, you can use um, you can manipulate the data obviously and have them come to the top, but you're going to look for those items. <laughs> but the other part of that is you probably want an overall summary of the statistics. So you want to know, you know, not every item that's lost, but what's the percentage of the items that are lost? It's something we need to be concerned about. So there's two elements of this. That the the first element is uh, is uh, <coughs> excuse me the overall, and that's uh, that's every item touched, and that is something you can you can use to take action upon your collection to do whatever needs to be done to clean it up or fix it. The second item. Or the second part of that is an uh, overall review of uh, your collection. You can use that information to, you know, go to your board for for funding for having projects done or whatever. You know, that that gives you some overall statistics on the health of your uh, your collection. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what to look at statistics here, but in a little bit. So. <clears throat> We're going to pull you, okay, again. And we're interested in knowing why you are considering an inventory project. I know we all, you had an awful lot of them. We're looking at it this year. We have some obvious answers up there. And uh, I'm just kind of interested to see what, what's winning here as far as why we're going to be doing a, looking at a, a inventory this year. I know a number of you have already answered. It's because you're switching to a new ILS. Yeah, and I think that's part, not part of the poll. That's that would be the others because uh, we didn't uh, consider that in our. Priscilla Stevenson together. says it's part of their quality measures. Yeah, you know, interestingly, we knew that uh, uh, items missing was a big concern. And that's a good reason to do an inventory. We thought that might be at the top of the list, and it is. But look what comes into the second place here, uh, and third place. Um, really Rebecca quite interesting. Column, uh, um, says assessment. we know that there are too many inaccuracies in our online catalog, and also has too many too many books that are unbarcoded and not in the online catalog. Yes, there have been a few inventory projects we've done that was a uh, focus to try and make sure every book was barcoded, and that if we located materials that didn't have a barcode, that we went ahead and added that. Um, if you have an unbarcoded collection, but you have catalog records for them, it's possible to do a thing called smart barcodes, where you order barcodes that already say what book they should belong to, and you just automatically upload those uh, barcodes to your records. Um, otherwise, it's a matter of getting a dummy barcode yeah. and just having to manually update each record as you go. Uh, Carla, yeah, trust me, smart barcodes, particularly if you've got a large collection, is the way to go. If you have a lot of books that need to be uh, you need to add uh, physical barcodes to do a smart barcode. Uh, interestingly, uh, we know we suspected that missing item theft was the, probably the highest thing. But look, uh, collection assessment. Uh, we're going to do a collection assessment, and this is part of it. And I'm interested to know in, in what way is, I mean, I, I agree and understand, but in your mind, what way is it part of the collection assessment? And then also another the one that came in third here, uh, we kind of suspected. We actually suspected that this is what was what the results were going to be. The one that came in third was assessing space. We know today that everybody is looking at more computers, more 
uh, more room in the library for people to inter interact and get involved. And so an inventory kind of tells you, that, you know, gives you an idea of uh, what's there, what you can get rid of, depending on how that inventory is conducted. So that one's pretty obvious. I am interested in, in, in hearing your response on collection uh, assessment. And in what way is the inventory Carla Davis helping? Cunningham ahead, says we need to find out what's on the shelf that's not adequately, adequately represented in the catalog. Ted McClure uh, need to know what, what, uh, what's there that's not in the catalog. So again, locating items that maybe were never cataloged properly or had to be added to the shelves for like an archives where they couldn't be added in advance. Uh, Ted McClure Let's see. Um, Pamela Hoft, know what's uh, what we load to discovery tool is accurate. And Justin Hill, moving to high density storage, yes. Um, that That's a pretty common one, making sure that if you are going to ship something off site, that it has a proper record so it doesn't get lost forever. Well, you know, here's one that uh, P Pamela Hoft is one that I hadn't anticipated. And that's knowing what to load, uh, that what we're loading on our discovery tool is accurate. Very good. Because that's a that's a uh, you know a big uh, issue here in the library world is uh, getting a appropriate discovery yeah, we, tools. Yeah, uh, we there. actually mentioned WorldCat yeah, earlier, really and that's been another reason why some people have done inventories. They want to make sure that any records they upload to WorldCat are accurate, so that they don't you know get requ a request through WorldCat for an interlibrary loan and then realize that the book's not actually there. You know, I want to tell you we really appreciate. Um, your input here, and, and that, I, I'm pleased because this is kind of what we're looking to do today: is to to have everybody share information here, and it's very much appreciated. Um, we got another poll for you. Now, a lot of you have done inventories in the past, and a lot of you haven't, and this, so this poll is for those who have done it, and also for those who haven't, what they're anticipating. Okay, so what problems? Have you experienced when you did an in, uh, inventory? What are you thinking? What are you worried about when you do an inventory? Um, we had one more comment from the last slide. Pamela Hoff said, uh, use collection assessment and usage to determine what budget cuts might be safely made. Well, this is interesting. I'm watching the, I'm watching the numbers move, which has always been quite fascinating mm -hmm. here. And so far, the winner. <laughs> But in close second, winner's time, and close second yes. is manpower. Time is so always that, something that you have sense. to keep in mind if you're going to do it on yeah. your own, um, because the longer the time span uh, you drag an inventory out over, um, the more likely errors are going to creep in. Um, you know, something might get returned and placed on the shelf past the point that you already checked. Um, you might find that something that you would have checked off was marked as checked out and then returned before you compiled all your data to verify whether it was checked out in the catalog or not. Um, whenever you do an inventory, you want to try and focus either on areas of your library that you can finish quickly uh, so that you can try and minimize those the error crept in through time. Um, and then, of course, manpower is, seems to be the second most popular. And, yeah, yeah, and being you able to have the bodies to throw it in an inventory to get it done in a short amount of time is another thing that tends to be a worry. Yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. And, and be aware that, uh, you know, time is, an, uh, it being an issue, the the uh, catch to time is when you go ahead and try to get it done quicker, then it's the, the risks involved are being able to get the people in to do it. That's a tough um, one. Some other problems. We had that, a project yeah. that, need, that would have, should have taken us. Thomas, sure. let me finish this first. We, we had a. We had a library that should have taken about eight or nine months to, to complete this project. They needed it done in the summer. And um, we we said, you know, we went at it to do it, and we did do it for them, but we ended up at a given time hiring over 40 people to get that job done. And, and you don't know how hard it is to hire people, 40 people, to get a job done when it's they're only going to be working for you for three months. So that's a... Uh, you know, the more you, the quicker you want it done, the more people you have to throw at it, and that is the risk. Sorry, Tom, Tom, uh, so I was just saying ahead. that the other problems people have listed off, uh, Ted McClure said lack of discipline, yes. Uh, I've heard a lot of cases where inventories only got partially completed because just other things got added on to people's task lists and it, it dropped in priority. 
uh, Robert, uh, Roberta Gwiltz, uh, I worry about keeping up with the cataloging errors that will be reported. Yes, that can be another concern. Um, that's another reason why you'll want to try and keep everything uniform um, in regards to what you're recording, such as in an Excel spreadsheet. So hopefully, uh, if you're going to make uploaded changes to your catalog, you can do that through an automated process. So you're not having to make one catalog correction at a time. Yeah. Um, Paula Brown, we would not consider doing an inventory since we well, the, you know, on a rotating news. basis. What was that, John? I was going to say the good news about the, uh, the collecting the data on the uh, um, items that need to be fixed is if you can't, it, you do have a time. You don't have to fix them the next day. I mean, most of them you won't. Some of them you probably will. But if you have a list of what's out there, then uh, you know you can do that over a period of time. Go ahead, Thomas. Right, uh, Paula Brown, we would not consider doing an inventory since we lead on a rotating basis. Assessment is a passive way of getting inventory into the cons conversation when you assess the collection. Then you can build a case for inventory as an accurate measure. Yes, that is true. Um, so long as you're having some sort of review of your collection on a regular basis, that might be sufficient. Uh, Chris Woods, technology failure. Yeah, um, depending on what ILS you're working with, what available uh, programs you have to work with, um, you could definitely have some problems. Um, Ellen Hollis, um, we need to close the building to a proper inventory. Um, Bermuda National Library is a public national library and a government department. So, yeah, that, that's another concern. Um, it is possible to do inventories while you're still open. Um, but, again, you working around the public is something you have to keep in mind. Um, Pamela Hoffs? Yeah, I mean, if you're if, – go ahead, Todd. I was going to let sure. me chime in for a second. If you have a very large library, I mean, there's no way that the – the you know your uh, the people that are in charge of that library are going to be able to close that for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So that is a concern. But inventories can be done uh, when libraries are open, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to do that too. Uh, so Pamela Hoff scanner sorry. errors where entire barcode is not displaying. Locating scanners that work with the current ILS. Um, we do find that uh, a lot of the time you need to possibly purchase new scanners that will work with whatever barcodes you have in your library. Um, and sometimes you even have to reprogram them to properly read the various types of barcodes that you have on site. Um, we've worked with several different uh, libraries that have, are old enough where they have numerous different iterations of barcodes in their collections, and we had to sometimes buy more than one scanner to work with all of them. Um, That's right. Angelina Brown, That's on the right. third floor alone, we found <clears throat> 974 items that we scanned that didn't exist somehow in the catalog. No bibs, no items, Michelle. Yeah, that... You'd be amazed how easy it is for That's someone great. to have created a record for something and just not hit enter to save it. So a book ends up on the shelf with no catalog record. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, the the library that was very surprised that we said there are 20% 20, 20 of your items that are not in your catalog, uh, we were right. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you can do Besides a, uh, a complete inventory to maybe do a check the health of your system. And yeah, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I really, really appreciate um, everybody chiming in. That poll, uh, you know, tells us that time is of essence. Time is the big concern. We don't have time to do it. We can't close our libraries. And, you know, we understand that. But there are other yeah. things that you can do. So we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. Alternative options for taking inventory. Remember I, uh, well, no, I'll talk about that in a second. One thing, there's there's drawbacks to each of these, and we'll talk about the drawbacks as well as what you can do, but these are, these are ways to approach an inventory. Libraries that I called, the bigger the collection, the harder it was for them to get an inventory done. That only makes sense, right? I mean... <laughs> You have three thousand, three million items in your in your uh, library, and you want somebody to go look at every one of those items. How the heck are you going to do that? Well, um, there are ways to do uh, this, and and one probably the best way, but uh, is to you know break your uh, collection into parts, assign uh, a head of that department as the the um, the inventory boss, or whatever you want to call them, and have them do inventory on that collection with either their staff or bringing staff in, and have that scheduled so that the other departments are doing are not doing theirs all at the same time. You don't have to do them all at the same time. You just have to have it all done eventually. 
So the drawback for this is, you, first of all, you got to get buy-in from staff. you got to get staff that are willing and able to do this. And it would be best if you can all come up with some kind of a consistent method, method to do this. And then you just have to write it. Somebody has to be the boss of how that is going to be conducted. But if you can do that, you can uh, you can actually break your inventory into parts. So if you have a you know a million books, but your history collection is only one hundred and fifty thousand, it's a lot easier to do an inventory on one hundred fifty thousand than it is on a million books. So that's one way. Uh, and the drawback again is is that it's it's management heavy. <laughs> And buy-in heavy. Another way to do this is to do, and we talked about this, because we basically do this when we go out and talk to you. You do a sample inventory. Now, you can get all kinds of great information from a sample inventory. You can find out how many books are missing, kind of. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but it's, you know, depending on the size of your sample, it's going to be pretty accurate. You can find out what the condition of your collection is. And so you should be able to get enough statistics to report back to the people who need to know in your library about the condition of your system. Now the obvious drawback about of this is, is that you really can't do anything unless you do a real inventory. So, so if you're gonna if you're planning on doing uh, you know fixing or pulling the books that are are not um, that are that you are condition issues, then in order in order for you to really know which ones are, you have to do an inventory of everything. However, that statistical analysis that uh, you may need as fuel to do things to your collection can be done with a uh, sample inventory. The other thing we talked about is um, it may be that your library is very big and, and it may be that, you know, maybe we'd love to do an inventory for the whole collection, but we can't and we can't at this time. But there are certain sections that we need to inventory, we need to uh, keep a thumb on. Prime, a prime suspect here is um, collections that have rare material in it. You should be able to uh, break that section down, and you know you know where your rare material is going to be, and do an inventory of just that section. Now, it's not going to give you everything you want. It's not going to give you the health of your entire collection, but it'll give you the health of that select that particular collection, and and that may be more important uh, at this point than getting the, the entire inventory done. So, those are some of uh, <clears throat> some of the ways that we thought of of uh, making a overwhelming task of doing an inventory of a, a very huge library uh, valuable to you. We're interested in hearing from you. So, if you have some other ideas or thoughts or things that you've done, go ahead and chat us, and then Thomas will read these off. Uh, it sounds like most of what people have been reporting back so far have that, been I'm... breaking it into smaller pieces, like we said. Um, that is a very common tactic, and it allows you to focus on one area and make sure it's done properly and in a short time span so you don't make any mistakes. Um, we are running a little short on time, so we're probably going to go ahead and move okay. forward with conducting an inventory. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I apologize. If we've, well, actually, I don't apologize. I'm excited that people are interested and have a lot to say here. We're going we're gonna to move forward. We don't have that much left to, to talk about, so we'll just move forward. Uh, we're going to save any more uh, questions until the very end here, which is just a couple slides away. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about conducting inventory, just kind of the, you know, the cheat sheet for conducting inventory. Um, the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is you need to notify staff and client, not your clientele or your patrons, that something's happening in the library. Um, so you know, you know, you need to go ahead and, and do that in advance of the inventory, particularly if it's going to be a little bit disruptive. Uh, and then you need to, uh, if you can, clean up the shelves to make the inventory more valuable. This is a good idea. For let me give you, a, for instance, all the things that are on carts and tables, put them back in order. If you have time, and you can send uh, some of your better uh, library technicians through, have them do a shelf read and try to put some of the stuff in order. That. You know that's going to be uh, more valuable because if you if if your software is going to report on everything out of order, you know if you don't do that, you're going to have very skewed statistics. You're going to have too much to look at, so to speak. Uh, and then of course you're going to have to figure out uh, you're going to have to devise either software or a printout of your shelf list, and then you're going to match that shelf list 
against the items that are on your your um, in your collection. And that's basically what you're going to do with an inventory. Now that uh, that shelf list you can modify by adding things to it, like condition of book that you may want to be have other things you want the library to look at. Okay. Um, and I've listed a few. You might want to look for missing items, condition check, uh, catalog mismatch. records that are mismatched. We've talked about all this before. Those, those can be added to your uh, to your um, inventory. Uh, and then uh, the, the final thing that you need to do is you need to match everything up against the, the uh, items and at the end of the day or whenever against the items that are checked out because because it's not on the shelf doesn't mean that it's lost. It could be in circulation, and so you need to know that. Those are those are the basic elements of uh, inventory. Uh, real briefly, we're going to go over statistical analysis here. Uh, you know, the first part of it is what have we done? You know, how much have we really? What have we uh, inventoried? And this that first part tells you how many days we've uh, inventoried, how many items. And, and it gives us some information on things like items out of uh, play in this shelf. You're going to analyze the data. Obviously, we talked considerably about that. We're going to talk about missing items. Uh, the, one of the good things is finding items that have been relocated. That'll be great to have to talk about uh, and to report. Um, and then, again, items that need to be replaced, mended, items that are misshelved, items that are uh, need to be corrected. And items that need to be weeded. All these are things that you can get from your uh, statistical analysis of your data. And then the last part of that is what am I going to do with this analysis? How much time do we spend on it? Did we meet the issues, uh, the goals that we set? Um, how many uh, issues did we uncover? Was this a positive impact for us? And what's our future plans for inventories? Are we going to be able to do this every other year? Or is this going to be every 10 years? I apologize for just zipping through that last one, but I got a cue that I'm running out of time. So we've got one more uh, questions and answers session here. And I just want to let you uh, know how much we really appreciate uh, your involvement with this uh, exercise that we've done here, the webinar on um, inventory. I'm going to go ahead to the last slide here. It is, uh, you can contact us at this number below or this email address. And at this point, we're done, but we are, I'm going to keep it open here for a little bit in case anybody else has some comments. Again, we really much appreciate your time. If you do comment, Thomas will read it off, and if we need to talk about it, we will. Thank you. Uh, Mara Sprain uh, did say uh, she was looking for suggestions for a sole librarian in a small centralized collection. Um, she said, I would not only have to do the inventory, but also fix all of the problems identified. Um, I recommended downloading the records into an Excel spreadsheet that's easier to work from, that you can use as a checklist. Uh, that's usually the low cost solution. That's right. Because uh, normally most libraries can at least afford to print out a few pages if they don't have a scanner, if they can't afford to buy extra scanners or uh, programs to work with for the inventory. Um, you can also then uh, work to record whatever changes need to be made. Um, and then once you start working off of those lists, targeting smaller chunks of your collection so that you don't stop off in the middle of something and then never finish it. Um, you don't want to you know, have a large break between one chunk and another of the same area uh, because, again, errors might have crept in at that point. Well, thank you again for everyone uh, logging on for our webinar. Uh, again, uh, the recording of this presentation, the slides from the presentation, um, and the write-up for everything will be available on our website um, in about a week. Uh, if you have any questions uh, for us, please use the contact information on this final slide. Our phone number is 1-800-288-1265, and you can contact us at info at pslw.com. Thank you very much.